WrestleMania 33 presented itself in the graphics as a roller coaster ride, and that was so accurate based on what happened. From John Cena proposing to Nikki Bella to the changing of so many belts, and to Undertaker's curtain call, there were so many memorable moments, but in my opinion, the most memorable, the one that had the biggest smile across my face was the return of the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Brothers, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, are back in the WWE, so I figure what better time than now to do a WWE Elite Series 2 review of selected figures. Right here I have Matt Hardy, who's probably very relevant right now, Batista, yet again another wrestler who's super relevant because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is coming out so soon, I'm so excited. And then Ted DiBiase, not as relevant. Where has he been? I have no idea. And Randy Orton, the Viper. Yet again, another relevant guy. So, here's the deal. I have four figures. I'm going to review them for you. But let me know in the comments what your favorite part of WrestleMania 33 was. And enjoy the reviews. So, of course, I had to kick it off with Matt Hardy, the man, not the place. Because, really, this was a very memorable moment for him last night. And I had to really get, get on that YouTube revenue paradise. So, here's the back of the box showing a picture of Matt Hardy. A nice description of him and all that stuff. A little did you know. Other people in the set, unfortunately, I do not have R-Truth or Triple H to be unboxed on this day. So, you'll have to bear with me. On the side of the packaging, there is a window and it says display stand included. Thank you, old school Mattel because we no longer get cool things like that. So let's get this guy out of his packaging. Opening this up is going to be an experience because I haven't opened figures like this in so long. It's been like a week or two or something, maybe. I don't know where the tape is. I'm gonna rip it. Oh no, wish me luck, everybody. Old school figures in the hands of the ultimate beast, Triple T. But lo and behold, Lo Anthony is even gasping at how amazingly simple that was to take out. All right, here he is in the pack. I've, I've been getting some flack from the people watching my video saying, yo, I take them out too drastically and that's what breaks them. So let's take it out slowly, slow motion. Boom, and he is out. Oh, oh, the check comes with a stand and a nameplate. Sick! Right here's the figure himself. Let me change the camera angle so you got you guys get a, a look at him. Here's Matt Hardy. The face is all right. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this is sculpted, not actually scanned. I don't know if the technology was there at this point. You can definitely see him in there. It's just not as accurate as for as contemporary Mattel figures might be. Uh, there's some. It definitely feels like someone sculpted it. The the way the visage looks, and I'm getting more more of a Baron Corbin in there than a Matt Hardy, but you can definitely see Matt Hardy from certain angles, especially like something like that. It, it certainly reads Matt Hardy. Maybe it's the old school style paint that's failing it, but uh, it's not the most perfect likeness, but it is good. But the coolest part about this figure is his jacket. You see these little details on there? Those are actual little pins or something that they attach. So they are me metal and they are metallic and mirrory. So that's really a level of detail that we do not see in this day and age. And is this jacket tough to take off? I hope not because Oh my gosh, that's the big problem with the old school clothing is that they leave stains. And because this is a Series 2 figure, it is stained up the wazoo. So probably if you want a Matt Hardy Elite 2, I'd recommend getting it from someone that already took it out of the box. So you don't have to worry about staining. You can see right there from any pictures on eBay or wherever you purchase it that it is not stained because as you can see on mine, it has many stains. But let's talk about his attire here. You see MH, which stands for Matt Hardy because of course he is the twist of fader Matt Hardy. And there's a little key with his logo because I think he's a big fan of like the black keys or something. And on his, on his boots, it looks like very cool things styling guys I trust me trust me it looks very cool I don't know what it's supposed to be but it looks cool and I'm getting some wobbly uh issues with his legs you can see there you know because this is my new thing I, I like to call Mattel out on is bendy leg Z and that that his right leg what you're seeing on the left is definitely not straight compared to his left 
your right. And on the back, it's just the same logo as on the front. So this is a Matt Hardy Elite. There have been two Matt Hardy Elites so far, and one Jeff Hardy, kind of, because only a few got released at, like, one store in one random place in America. Uh, but hopefully we'll be seeing more, because this is a solid-looking figure, but I know that contemporary Mattel, even though their quality control isn't as good as it was Back in this day and age, back when they were making these figures, we won't have to deal with standing issues. And I'm certainly confident that the face in any future release will far surpass this head. But yo, this jacket's sick. It's too bad it, it stains though. But considering the figure's already stained, I think I'll leave that jacket on full time. Hey, do you guys walk alone? Because I do too. And oops, sorry. This <gasps> hey guys, do you walk alone? Because I certainly do. And this is Batista Series 2 yet again, coming with cloth goods yet. Again, I'm probably not going to have him wear it at this stage because he is not stained. I'm just going to imagine that that will definitely stain him. The back of the box, you can certainly zoom in and I'll zoom in for you so you can read those if you want to pause and other people in the set. We've seen it all before. Look at that smiling Batista. He's still love it. Looking just like Drax the Destroyer. I love it. All right, let's open this up, bad boys and girls and dogs and cats. This is going to be tough. I want to keep it mint condition packaging. Can I do it? I did it. Ah, oh, yeah. So here is Batista again. Uh, old school. They love their, their twisty ties. Uh, their elastic to hold these figures in place. Here we go, take him out slowly and carefully so people don't conspire that that is what is actually causing all these errors on these figures. But no, let's be honest, the uh, those bent legs have always happened. And here I'm seeing some differentiation between color tones on his thighs. I'm not sure if that'll come across in this video. And I'm going to assume it's because uh, it's been mint on card for so long. And that's certainly one of the things for mint on card people you don't really notice until you take it out, is that it's not an archival way to store figures and sun's gonna get in there and damage it, plastic's gonna degrade, and like you saw with Matt Hardy, things will stain. So that's another one for people taking it, their figures out of the box. That's a, that's a benefit of it. Here is his head, let's zoom in. Let's get that full Batista head. And kind of like I was saying with the Matt Hardy is that this is a good Batista head. You can definitely read him there more than you can Matt Hardy, but it's nowhere close to the contemporary heads we have made by Mattel. Those heads really knocked it out of the park. They look so much like Batista. Uh, this is good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as amazing. And here are some tattoos on his sidearm. I don't know what they say or what they're trying to trying to portray or something, but it's Batista, so it's probably cool. And there's another one, and of course his belly button tattoo. And on his back is like his dragons and stuff, but it's not as highly detailed as that most recent one was. But then again, look at that sick dragon on the back of his tights. And yo, quality control, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, that's not great. And on the back of his pads, his Batista logo. Yeah, so we got crazy amount of detail on this figure. Plus, he came with a crazy accessory, which we haven't seen in so long. A referee shirt, which I'd love to see more often. I think it was just like this and probably some Toys R Us exclusives. But you are seeing some quality control issues on this guy. A rather large one, though, back there, in my opinion. That's uh, that's not cool. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the conspirators on this channel will blame it on my level of not taking it out carefully out of the package. Because that seems to be the new Tommy Toy Travels comments meme going on right now. But uh, let me just say that y'all can go and rewind the tape all you want. You ain't gonna prove nothing comes with the shirt. I already said I'm not putting it on because I don't want any standage issues with this Batista because it is Batista. I love Batista. He's so cool. Gardens of the Galaxy, guys. He does come with his base with his nameplate, so I'll, I'll put that together for you on camera. On camera. So let's get ready for it. Get your swag meter up, guys. Let's get your swag meter all the way up and cut it. Cut a dab, guys. Cut a backwards dab, okay? Get it behind your back, okay? As I try and like, put this in there, and it barely went in, but look at that. Look at that. 
lit off. Yeah, it's sick. And then you put Batista on there. Sick. Let's keep going. Here's Ted Diabetes. DBS, uh, brother of the million dollar man DBS. Just kidding. This is his son, Ted DiBiase. And on the back, it says a bunch of things again about him. You can pause if you want to read that, but I'm pretty much not going to focus on this guy too much because I am so excited for the Randy Orton of the set. So let's open this guy up and check it out. The, oop, 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 I just destroyed the packaging. So this guy was in a tag team with Cody Rhodes, I think, called, like, The Legacy or something, or was that Randy Orton? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. My historical, because I am a fake WWE fan, can, you know, if we're talking about the memes of the comics, the comment section, so I do need to point out that I have no idea who this jabroni really is. I've never actually seen him wrestle. I just know that people liked him, I think. And here is his nameplate base send. Here's the figure itself. Unfortunately, this is one of the least flashy figures I've seen from this set. It's uh it's alright, but like could have used a couple colors. This is definitely the figure of the wave that didn't get any budget. The face. Looks yet again sculpted. I think all these were sculpted. I don't think they had the face scanning technology yet. But on the back, there is some nice detail there. It's priceless and stuff like that. But overall, I'm getting the feeling that this is pretty much a basic, other than the articulation. Like, it's definitely basic level paint work, paint job, and paint application. But we do get a Ted DiBiase, the legacy t-shirt. So if you want to put a t-shirt on this figure doll, go right ahead. And I, I want to point out something funny right here that I'm noticing. I think they botched it a little bit with the type of leg. Looks like there are tights because it seems like there are some rolls for tights there. So I'm not sure what's going on with the top leg where it meets his tights. That might have been a bot alert. All right, this video is going so long, it's almost Monday Night Raw time, and I'm ending this with the Raw Dog. Just kidding, it's not John Silver, it's Randy Orton, the Viper. The Viper who hears voices in his head. What do they tell him? Probably like the normal things our voices in our heads tell us, like, uh, oh, don't forget, you're hungry, and oh, don't forget to flush the toilet, even though, you know, that's like a really tough thing to do. Am I right? Yeah. So I have a thing I have to say. You get one Randy Orton figure, you got them all. Because they're all like the same color. Because Mattel only made like one that was a different color. And it was a basic legend killer Randy Orton, which was orange. And I, I'm just waiting, yo. Yeah, we got gray, but gray is like one step away from being black. And here is his uh, name tag. And there it goes. This figure is super loose. It's loose, 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 loosey goosey. Uh, and I'm seeing the same issue as I am with this that I saw with Batista, the different colors. Yet again, it's better to take your figures out of the packaging if you want to keep them precious forever, which seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Yeah, whatever. That's what the anime fan base tells us. I'm seeing some... I'm seeing some marks there on his legs. Hey guys, we got a mark and plier here. <laughs> ha! All right, so let's continue this. This review is awful as always. I think like every review, I have to say this is awful. He's super shaky, super loose. Uh, the head sculpt, paint job. Yeah, you can see him in there, but yo, this looks like very old school, just starting up Mattel, not a face scan. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Figure Toy Company's line where you can tell that it's sculpture. It's just not where it should be yet, but it's it's still good. And I am seeing a lot of uh, inaccurate colors, colors not matching based on pretty much every part of his body. I don't, th I don't know if that's actually Mattel's fault or if it's because this is such an old figure stored for so long. His tattoos are all on there and they are different colors. Like we have some in gray, we have some in black, which I don't think they do anymore. I think they just do it in one color, but that's, that's cool to see that back then they were actually giving some gradation and stuff like that. And on the back, it says Orton in blue. Blue and black look cool. It reminds me of Weezer with the blue album. And uh, I doubt a lot of the budget went into this guy either. 
but let me lower the camera. He did come with an accessory, and it was uh, a shirt with a dude wearing a gas mask like Doctor Who. Are you my puppy? And that's the figure. It's not the most exciting, but it was Randy Orton. And I'm sure a lot of you, if you were buying figures at this time, picked this up. Because it still holds up to you today as a great Randy Orton figure. So here we go, kicking off with the two that I'm not so excited about and ending with the two that I'm super excited with. These figures are dated, they are old, but they still hold up to this day, especially when you can't compare them to a John Cena. I don't know what that meant, I just wanted to throw up that John Cena figure for a second. I like these figures, and a lot of times as a reviewer I look back at these figures and think they were like the golden age and stuff like that but they really weren't that golden because the sculpting wasn't there with the heads because the technology wasn't there the only thing that these have over it was paint application and and detail it was a bit better they had a bit more in their budget to do crazy things like Matt Hardy's jacket but still there was staining issues so it's kind of like a give and a take, you know? Quality has gone downhill, the articulation hasn't changed, or it's gotten worse, but they're still solid figures, and it's fun to collect. So sometimes we just need to take a step back and be like, yo, this is fun. You know, we don't actually need any of these toys to sustain ourselves in our lives, in our time on this planet. But it's still fun to collect, it's still fun to talk with people, it's still fun to get all annoyed about their choices and their mistakes, and it's a, it's a fun community. So thank you all for allowing me to be your host during this video, just like New Day were last night. And I can't wait to see Mattel's next Matt Hardy! I bet you can't wait either. Cut. Thank you for watching. <laughs>